This is the Regents Made Simpler video explanation with visuals of the January 2024 Earth Science Regent exam. It's a three hour exam. This one was taken on January 26th. So this is the examination you are to be given on your exam when you take it. So it's just good to familiarize yourself with this information. Question one, the diagram below represents the moon at one position in its orbit around Earth. The numbers represent locations on Earth's surface. At which number location would high tide be occurring when the moon is in the location shown in the diagram? So here's the Earth, and then you have the sun's rays, and the moon orbits around the Earth. So the moon orbits around the Earth as the Earth orbits around the sun. And we have the different phases of the moon as it orbits. And as the moon orbits, the as you remember, the hydrosphere, the oceans of Earth, they get drawn to the moon by gravity, also to the sun as well. So whatever position the moon is in, that's where the tides, which is uh, when the water level rises, uh, the water will rise to in the position where the moon is. So if the moon's over here, the high tides will be at this location on Earth. The low tides will be in the back. If the moon is over here, then high tides will be over here on Earth, and the low tides will be on the back. The highest high tides and the lowest low tides on Earth would be when the moon and the sun are all aligned, as you remember in the review course. So this question is asking when would the high tide be? The high tide would be if the moon is at this location. Again, the moon is going to be um, at one. This would have the highest high tides because the moon uh, is a uh, gravitational pull will pull the water, uh, make it high tide at that location. So the answer in this question is going to be one then. Question two, cosmic background radiation provides evidence of the what? So cosmic background proofs for the Big Bang. The Big Bang is how the universe uh, to have started is that the universe was a Everything that we see in the universe today was in a very, very small dot, and that dot then exploded out in all directions. So how do we know that this small dot exploded out in all directions at a point 14 billion years ago? One is cosmic background radiation, which is that if you look in the background of the universe, there's a lot of radiation throughout the universe. If you went back to Nagasaki in uh, Japan, that's where the in Hiroshima, that's where the atom bombs were dropped in, 19, in the 1940s. If you go there, you will see there's a lot of radiation still in the air. So the universe, we see a lot of radiation in the universe must mean that it expanded and exploded from a certain point. The second proof is the Doppler effect, which is that as the galaxies look out at the galaxies, they have a red shift, which means that they must be moving away from us because red has a longer wavelength. So as they move away, the wavelength gets longer. So that's another proof of the Big Bang. But cosmic background radiation is one of the two proofs for the Big Bang. So that's the answer. Is The answer is going to be one. Question three, approximately how many degrees does Earth travel in its orbit in six months? So Earth, like other planets in our solar system, orbits around the sun. Um, on the reference table, it says that it takes 365 days. Uh, that is 12 months. So there's 12 months in one year. Uh, a year is how long it takes the Earth to travel once around in an orbit around the sun. That's 12 months. So it's asking for how many degrees does Earth travel in its orbit in six months. So that's going to be half the time because, again, the full time is 12 months. So half the time would be six months. Now, there's 360 degrees in a circle. So therefore, if it's half that amount, the answer would be 180 degrees because it's 360 in total. Uh, therefore, half of that er orbit is going to be 180. The answer, therefore, is going to be 3. Question 4, the constellation Orion, constellation is a group of stars, is visible in, night in New York State in the night sky during winter, but it is not visible in New York State in the night sky during the summer. Because why? Because the Earth rotates on its axis, the Earth revolves around the sun, Orion rotates on its axis, and Orion revolves around the sun. So Earth, as it orbits around the sun, it will see different constellations because as the as the Earth orbits here in its orbit, uh, it will see Orion here during the winter months, uh, during the winter. But as it orbits over here, it will see these constellations because uh, it is orbiting around the sun. It doesn't stay in one position. Therefore, we see different constellations. Constellations are groups of stars. Therefore, the answer is going to be the Earth revolves around the sun. The answer, therefore, is going to be two. So you see the Earth orbiting around the sun. Question five, the diagram below represents a scientific in instrument. We have here, a uh, it's attached to the ceiling. You have uh, it's attached and it's swinging. It's a swinging pendulum. You have the ring of pegs being knocked down on the floor. This instrument provides evidence that Earth spins on its axis, is tilted on its axis, has a spherical shape, moves along an orbital path. This is going to be showing. This is going to be showing a focal pendulum, which one of the which is one of the two proofs for a rotation that the Earth spins on its axis. The focal pendulum is that it's a free swinging uh, pendulum that um, is free swinging pendulum from a ceiling, and you have the rings of pegs and it's swinging just side to side. But since the Earth is rotating, the this uh, 
pendulum will knock over all the pins in the circle, even though it's just moving side to side. But since underneath it, it's rotating, therefore, it's going to knock over all the pins. That's going to be one proof that the Earth rotates. The second proof we, dis we discuss is the Coriolis effect, is that the winds on Earth do not move in a straight line. In the northern hemisphere, they move clockwise. And in the southern hemisphere, they move counterclockwise. Like if you're on a merry-go-round, you throw a ball, uh, the ball will curve. Just like on Earth, the winds will curve as well, called call the Coriolis effect. Uh, but this the question to answer number five, therefore, is going to be one, that the Earth spins on its axis because that's showing a focal pendulum. The answer, therefore, is one. Question six, the diagram below represents a flagpole in a shadow in New York State at solar noon. So you have the flagpole in the shadow. The shadow is pointing from the base of the flagpole toward the south, the northeast or west. So the flagpole is in New York State, and we have it at solar noon. So here is New York State. New York State is located in the northwest uh, part of the globe, the Northwest, we have a globe. Now at solar noon is when the sun is directly in front of that location. So here is, uh, here is New York and here is the sun. The sun at solar noon would be directly in front of it. So if it's directly in front and this is New York, this again is North, this is South, this is East, and this is West. West. So when the sun shines on this right here, the shadow will go towards this way, right? If uh, anyone knows how shadows work, uh, you're living on earth, you know how shadows work. The sun hits this right here and the shadow will go towards the north. So the answer therefore is going to be north because we're in the northern hemisphere. Question seven, which term best describes the curving of earth's planetary winds and major surface ocean currents? El Nino, orbital eccentricity, Doppler effect, or Coriolis effect? So this is showing you the Coriolis effect. The Coriolis effect uh, is what causes the winds and the ocean currents on Earth to move clockwise in the northern hemisphere and counterclockwise in the southern hemisphere. So we have a Cori Coriolis effect mentioned in the last question. So in the northern hemisphere, the winds don't just move. They move away from the equator, but they don't move in a straight line. They move not, uh, not away from the equator, but they move um, in the northern hemisphere. They don't move in a straight line. They move clockwise because of the Coriolis effect. Again, if you're on a merry-go-round and you throw a ball to someone else on the other side, the ball won't go straight. It will move. It will curve. Same thing with on Earth. Since the Earth is rotating, the uh, winds will therefore curve in the northern hemisphere clockwise and in the southern hemisphere counterclockwise. Now, the winds cause the surface ocean currents to move as well. The surface ocean currents are the top layer of the ocean. The winds go over the, this top layer of the ocean and causing it to move as well. As you see, the surface ocean currents follow the same paths as the winds as well. Therefore, the answer is going to be for the Coriolis effect is therefore going to be the answer. Question eight, which landmass has at least one location where the sun will be directly overhead at solar noon at some time during the year? So Antarctica, Australia, Europe, or Greenland? So the, so the seasons of the earth, the earth stays tilted as it orbits around the sun. This causes the seasons. This causes the season. So we first have the winter solstice. And you see the Earth is tilted 23 and a half degrees. It is tilted 23 and a half degrees from a line that is perpendicular to the plane of Earth's orbit. So therefore, it stays tilted as it orbits around the uh, sun. So therefore, you have this season here. This is the winter solstice. And you have the 23 and a half degree south line will hit. Uh, will be hit directly by the sun and therefore there are the hottest and you have the equinoxes it hits it directly at the equator and then by the summer solstice the sun's rays will hit directly at the 23 and a half degree north line this is again because the earth stays tilted 23 and a half degrees uh, as it orbits around the sun now which locations will have the sun directly overhead at solar noon they'll have it directly overhead at solar noon solar noon is when the sun is directly in front of that place on earth and only places at the equator or between 23 degrees south and 20 degrees north and the equator as well, will have the sun directly overhead because it's getting direct sun rays. So therefore we have to look for a location, one of these one of these four locations that are between those two latitudes. You have the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn, which is 23 and a half north and 23 and a half degrees south. So which one of those uh, locations are located between that? The answer therefore is going to be Australia. You see Australia is right here. Antarctica is on the bottom, it's very cold. Europe is right here. Europe, you see, is not within those lines. And Greenland is all the way up top. It's cold as well. Therefore, the answer is going to be Australia. Question nine, what is the primary source of energy that causes all weather phenomena on Earth? Volcanic eruptions, residual heat from Earth's formation, convection currents in the hydrosphere, incoming solar radiation. The answer is going to be four incoming solar radiation, which is insulation. The sun's rays is what influences really all the weather phenomena on Earth because the sun's rays cause, uh, as weather, as talked about in the review course, 
you have the there's high and low pressure because the earth is shining on different locations on earth more directly than others causing there to be very low pressures by the equator and very high in other spots now causing the winds to move and also causing the oceans to evaporate water because of the sun's rays and causing clouds to form so therefore the phenomena is all really based on incoming solar radiation which is uh, insulation uh, from the sun so the answer. Hi, I'm Donnie Rudansky from Regents Made Simpler, and you can purchase this entire course for only $89. This includes a two-part review of all the material you have to know in a simplified version, plus video review with visuals of the past of the past two Regent exams. I am putting up one for the third as well for June 2023 as well. So you can get that all for $89, which is actually less than a typical one session with a tutor, a personal tutor, which usually you will need a few sessions of, but you can watch this, this course at your own pace for only $89 and know everything you need to know for the upcoming exam in just three hours without using any flashcards, anything like that, using this course. So that's on the bottom right here, clicking there, go to go to regentsmadesimpler.com. You can see this course here. I could show you a little bit of it. So here we have biology and earth science as well. And what you'll get again is a two-part review a review course going over all the material you have to know in a simplified version and as you see my version plus video review of visual and visuals with visuals of the past region exam so here you can see here it's not just a video of me explaining the material it's also me with visuals from the reviews going over that the questions as well and go, going over why the answers were wrong as well so be sure to check that out here on the bottom uh, clicking here to go to regions made simpler.com